Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it is Thursday night, so it is time once again for The Tank Show, where we get together, hang out, have some fun, try and entertain you all, and hopefully spend some time acquiring new knowledge. Of course, I have my buddy, pal, and co-host, Chad Nuga Ed, with me today. Ed, as always, thank you so much for being here. Uh, Going to have some fun tonight. This is a topic brought on courtesy of Ed, and it fits right in perfectly with the, the tank theory, the tank method. Uh, I do want to apologize in advance to everybody it's, i haven't slept in about 30 hours or so so i'm either going to be really chatty or really loopy we'll find out um but my eye has been driving me crazy so if you're like what's wrong with his eye it's it's just a thing uh it's not pink eye so don't freak out but my apologies i'm be like this and kind of wobbly but we're gonna have fun we're gonna talk about uh something a little bit different you know we come on here to YouTube to learn and interact and have fun, but we oftentimes don't think of the old school way that we would learn things, and that is books. Uh, Ed recently picked up some new books um, that he was showing me. I was like, hey, that would be a great thing to talk about. I know we've talked about it before on the channel in a different series. Uh, it's been a while ago, but after a couple of years, it's time to repeat things anyways, because you get a lot of new people that cycle into the, the fish fam, if you will. Uh, so we're going to talk about books again. Um, some of the things that you can look for, it, it's really, it's a great way to expand your knowledge base while you're gaining that experience. That's one thing that Ed and I talk about a lot is, you know, we don't claim to be experts on anything. So we just go off of experience, you know, uh, decades uh we won't put numbers on it we won't tell just how old Ed and i are but you know a lot of years of experience but things that we maybe don't have experience in we read about and that is why we're talking about books today some of the different methods that ed and i use for acquiring books um, at a reasonable rate because books can get expensive uh, some of the things to look for when you're getting books things to know if you are going to use books as an information source uh, and just overall have fun, probably look at some pretty fish pictures. So I got a bunch of books lined out over here. Not all of mine, but about 20 different fish books. Uh, of course, we will be taking questions from the chat. If you put the at symbol in front of Fish Room Fever, that will highlight it for me. And we can grab that question or comment out of the chat. So just Ben Backstrom saying, hey, James and Ed. And hey, chat. Ben, hello. Good to see you. Hope you're doing well. Killer Kitty 8 saying, uh, me too, in reference to me saying, I like new fish. It's probably why we have MTS, LOL. Yes, that's how I got fish room fever. <laughs> Absolutely. Craig, how are you? Craig's Catfish Cave saying hello. Appreciate you being here. Ed, do you want to go ahead and show them the books that you picked up? Sure. Well, all the books that I've owned previously have been freshwater books, mostly. I mean, I do have one that's kind of just a general thing, and it was like a big, giant, huge thing that I got at a garage sale years ago. That basically tells you nothing. It just had pretty pictures. But so I went for a couple of uh, these aquarium ones. I went with reefs and saltwater. So now what did you call just a, a saltwater tank without corals? So without corals, it's typically called a fowler, F-O-W-L-R, fish only with live rock, because usually you have rock in there. Well, I'm thinking that that's what this one will be more about, and this one will be more about the corals. Absolutely. But, I mean, we have, here in Tennessee, we got these bookstores called McKay's Bookstores. Mm -hmm. And every town, well, not every town, but the big, bigger cities all have just one. There we and go. it is the biggest used bookstore of all time. And, like, look at that, 75 cents. 75 cents, 75 cents. And it was something else. Gotta love it. It was probably a quarter. Should I peel it up and try to find out? Maybe it was a dollar like James was. <laughs> Absolutely. Hey, but, Skipper, how are you? Hey, Skipper. Uh, after this stream, I'm going to go, and we're going to have Skipper taking the place for Rico tonight. Rico isn't feeling good, unfortunately. Oh. Always sorry to hear that. It's a scam. This one's 75 cents also. They double stickered me. Okay, well. Swindled. Oh, nope, they're identical. Hey there, Pegasus Serena. She says hello. She's watching with the kids. That is awesome. I love that. We've got a lot of younger viewers, and we do always keep it family friendly. So if it's your first time tuning in, 
Uh, don't worry, we keep it safe for the whole family because that's what we're about. So yeah, um, just kind of some of the things that you can find in terms of books. I mean, the all over the spectrum. It, you know, that's this is one of my favorites. The green screen is going to kill me tonight. A mini encyclopedia of aquarium plants. I have to hold them back here. And this was six bucks at McKay's, like he mentioned. Yeah, I, and McKay's it, had one for twelve dollars. I wanted, and it was a huge fish book. It was freshwater and salt water, and it was like a colored image, a side image of every fish in a book that thick with their names and like their common names and their land names. And I was like, boy, I should exactly. buy that. But that's I one of the reasons I love this book, the mini encyclopedia is because it's got a picture with every single plant that's in it. Uh, one thing I did want to talk about uh, when you get into some older books, because I've got books that are, you know, 30 years old, uh, things do change a little bit. One of the big things would be lighting. So if you're getting into a book, like I've got a book that's from the early 90s right here, uh, when it talks about setting up your aquarium lighting, you know, things have changed. We've got uh, LEDs now are a big thing. You don't have to, you know, for instance, in salt water, you don't have to deal with metal halides and things like that. Uh, you used to have to put a lot of money and a lot of heat into your tank from the big heavy duty lighting setups. Yeah, this is one thing I recommend. Um, I'm going to do a lot of ums. Normally, I'm pretty good at not doing the ums, but being sleepy and sick is not helping with that. So when you're looking at books, I would try and get one for plants, one for fish diseases. Uh, like, that's here we go. Great, yeah, that's a color guide of tropical fish diseases. And then oh, I had another one. Uh, but what I'm getting at here is try and get some things to where when you're still learning and figuring stuff out, you've got that picture with the description like he talked about. You can go through here and go, oh, well, you know, is that plant that I have, which this talks about the whole setup and organic substrate and all that stuff, open-topped aquarium. Well, is this plant that I have actually bulbitis? Well, let me look at bulbitis in the picture. Oh, yeah, that's that's what it is. That's what I've got. Or, no, that's... They said it was bulbitis, and it doesn't look like that at all. Let me see if I can figure out what it is, or maybe go into a forum or ask a friend what I have. This book, and it's weird that this is just a uh, pastime reading, but it's good to know this stuff. This book here has actually got really, really in-depth descriptions about disease. The green screen is not going to do me any favors today. Now I'm gone. Bye, everybody. I'm going to do the... Uh, the thing just like that it's going to be the the talking fingers but it's got the pictures and like really good descriptions tons and tons of diseases pictures of actual you know fish that are suffering from those diseases versus a, a drawing or a, a representation that's not an actual photo of a fish with the actual disease so that was that's something that i would recommend you look for if you're going to do books find something like that you don't always have somebody available to say, hey, you know, do you think this is that? Do you think this is, you know, whatever disease? So a resource like that where you've got a lot of good information and you've got photos to help you identify it, something excellent to have. And that was six bucks at the used bookstore, like uh, Ed had mentioned. Same with the aquarium plants. That was six dollars. Now, a lot of my books were a buck. I paid more than Ed. He did 75 cents. But these, and these are older, a lot of the pictures are in black and white. This is the exotic aquarium fishes. This oh, I've got that one. Yeah, I've got, I've got a couple of different ones. This is a smaller one. This is an older one. The one I've got up on the shelf that I didn't grab is about that thick versus that. But even this older one, it's still got some color photos, but it has black and white photos in it as well. But it's still a great source of information to have. Maybe you're trying to think of some new fish to put into a tank. Or, you know, we get up here and say, hey, what about this fish? You can do some some reading research on top of watching videos. We still want you to watch videos, of course. We want you to come hang out with us and watch YouTube and get information that way. But these are a great resource to have on top of in addition to YouTube. Well, this one. Go ahead, buddy. One thing I find that's nice about books is it brings up topics that we aren't mainstreaming. You know, and I Absolutely. think it's probably because of the past, you know, because everything goes in cycles. And like, you know, maybe everybody's talking canister filters for a while, 
but yeah. they're going to talk about maybe gravel filters or underground filters and uh, different things. And it's just, it's kind of neat to get more than one perspective on the hobby, even though, you know, I'm price. I shouldn't say that because we want you guys to watch YouTube, but still, seriously, I think that YouTubers really get into cycles. It kind of feels like. Yeah, absolutely. The hobby kind of does that. And of course, you know, you've got to think, at least in my mind, I feel like part of that is going to be, you know, driven by business. What can business push as the thing to make money? So you're going to have some advances that are good for the hobby, of course. But sometimes advances are better for the manufacturer than they are for the actual fish or the fish keeper. So it's nice to read about other alternatives, things that maybe aren't in the mainstream, like Ed mentioned. You know, there are some things that I've looked through these books. And I'm like, I've never even heard of that before. And then I had something else entirely to research about. And that's part of where, again, even after reading books after book after book, I don't claim to be an expert. It's just I've kept a lot of fish and I've read a lot of stuff. I'm going to jump in the chat real quick. And then we're going to kind of go through some more of these books, take a look at them, and uh, talk a little bit more about that. Make sure I didn't miss anything highlighted. There was Skipper saying hello. Fish Tank Barn, how's it going, Mike? With the $4 super sticker with that cup of coffee pair. I appreciate that very, very much. I've got an energy drink. I've got some juice. And I've got some water here. And so I've got the bases covered. I've got some iced coffee in there. I may go for that when we switch over to Ed Show. But this Saturday, we will be doing our saltwater series, Simple Saltwater Live with Fish Tank Barn, Chad Nugget, Ed, and myself going to be a fun show. I hope you come over and hang out. Even if you're not planning on setting up a saltwater tank, it's still a really good show. A lot of people come over there and they've said, hey, I'm not going to set up a tank, but I still enjoy being here and learning about it and asking questions. So we encourage you to check us out this Saturday. Levi's Aquatics, hello. Good to see you. m &C, how are you? Says just here lurking. UPSers living the dream, dropping that dollar super sticker with that big brown pile of fertilizer. Thank you so much, you UPSer. Looking forward to seeing you and a lot of other people at Aquaticon here in Knoxville, Tennessee, this coming April. That is going to be a lot of fun. Uh, link is in the description if you want to learn more about that. I'm sure the mods will drop the links as well. Roll on down through here. Make sure I'm not missing anything. I can't wait for that to happen. That's going to be super fun. Now, this this wasn't highlighted, but I want to grab what it says here. All I see is there's a super awesome book uh, on Amazon about fish diseases. It's a vet clinical guide, but it's like $200. The most I've spent on a book is the Aquarium Plants by Castleman, which is $75. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, there are some books out there that are extremely expensive. I'm not saying they're not a good investment, but you could definitely, if you're just getting into it, you that $200 could go a long way into a broad source of knowledge that you could get aside from that that book there bunny yes. viper said she's a, a book hoarder she loves getting the different fish books i believe so that's pretty awesome sorry i didn't Absolutely. mean to cut you off no that is awesome I, I think i've got about 45 different fish books some of them are the same i've ended up with some books that i didn't realize i had the book already so this one is the abcs of goldfish and this one is also same company, ABCs of Goldfish, oh. but a different volume. So oh, there's cool. one thicker than the other, but That's you know, I, I saw it and I was like, I don't have that one. And the funny thing is, and this is another thing I want to talk about, I'm not a goldfish person. I have no plans on keeping goldfish. I really don't need to know anything about goldfish per se, but I, I want to have that knowledge and I want to learn as much as I can about goldfish. Same thing with discus. And this is one of the cool things, you know, discus are one of those fish that people tend to put a lot of effort uh, researching on that. There's another one that was a dollar and that's a, a really nice wow. book there. Uh, we've got koi for a buck. That was a good one. I almost bought that koi one and it was a dollar at my store today. So my McKay's is the same price. Maybe they just have a, a price list on the computer. It goes to all the stores. They may very well. Better care for a buck. If we ever like have a, a EMP or something, knock out all of our abilities to be entertained, we've got lots of books to read. We do, absolutely. There's more goldfish books. Wow. I, have, I have no, you know, goldfish are not my thing. They're beautiful fish. It's just not the fish that I want to have in my tanks. 
or discus books. It doesn't hurt to have books or information and knowledge about something that even though maybe you're not interested in it right now, you might want to keep that in the future. Uh, also, it's nice to be able to help people. It's nice if somebody says, hey, I'm, I'm having this problem or I have this question. Plus, I mean, let's look at the pretty pictures there. The green screen is going to try and kill me here. but It's strange. You know. The blue one's coming out and the yellow one's not. Yeah, I think I can turn it and make it. Oh, okay. There we go. But well, again, on recommendations, the, uh, the things like A Beginner's Guide to Tropical Fish, uh, Intros to Aquariums, uh, how to set up your first aquarium, things like that. The basic knowledge books are always great to have. Sorry, go ahead, Ed. Last year, this time, we picked up, I think we were going to do 12 books each and try mm. to read one book a month. I got about halfway through at one. I cheated. I had, a bunch of, I had a bunch of books like this, so it was, oh. it was easy for me. I mean, well, I also you know, had the bigger books, but... I did read one on... Uh, Live bearers also. It was a Pastilia book. So I guess actually I probably read about three and a half books last year. But very uh, nice. Well, but I was going for twelve. So yeah. I didn't quite hold up. That is <laughs> yeah. I mean it happens. It does, you know, it is what it is. But uh, one of my favorite books, and this is mostly in German, but I got it just because it's got a lot of good pictures and you know, some of it's in English, but hey, we got a show. Cool. That one. Aquarium Planet or Plants? Aquarium Plants, the Practical Dot Guide. And this is the one by Pablo Tabut. Uh, and it said it's pretty much all in German. Uh, underwater landscaping. I'd like so, to get a scaping book. Uh, I have. Mixed opinions on scaping. I uh, love looking at other people's scapes, but mm -hmm. I don't believe in a theory that all tanks should be scaped the same. Absolutely. Uh, I, I, go I ahead. think it's like an art piece, like a canvas. You know, there's so many styles of art out there that look amazing. You know, like, you know, realism versus cubism. cubism. You know, they're both, everything is amazing, and you, it takes all the different scapes to make it work. Absolutely. And that So that's kind of my, I don't want to be told how to do it, but I want to be told how to maintain it. Right. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. And that's where uh, my, my rule number one, when people ask me about aquascaping, I said, make sure that you create something you're going to enjoy looking at. The last thing you want to do is put all that time and effort and money and energy into creating a tank in your home for you to enjoy that you don't like the look of it, but it's made the way it's supposed to be. I mean, that, it does you no good to go, oh, well, that looks exactly like a tank that George Farmer did if you don't like the way that tank looks, just like you mentioned with art. Exact same thing. I'm going to jump back into the chat here. Scuba Steve was asking if I have the King of DIY books. I do not. Um, you know, I'm waiting for him to bring me that autographed copy. I thought he was going to bring it at Aquashella. He didn't. I'm going to have to send him another private message and, and get on him because I thought he was bringing that for me. You know, and actually his book, I mean, I've never read it, but his earlier stuff was super informative on how to build tanks and uh, filters and all sorts of great things. He just, he, and I really love his earlier stuff. Not that his new Absolutely. stuff isn't uh, good, but I, I that book is just jam packed with useful knowledge, and I wish that there was more of it out there to get. But yeah, I think it's very limited, isn't it? I mean, there's so, uh, and I think Joey's even said this. Uh, you can only do so many DIY projects so many times. Um, there's there's a ton of different stuff you can do and a ton of different things to learn about DIYing. But after years and years and writing a book about it, I don't know how many times he could do similar projects over and over again. He did such a good wow. job at covering so many things um, that I, I I really like his, his earlier content. Like you said, not that I don't like the yeah. stuff he does now, but I... That was what really got me hooked on it. Me being a DIY person and doing lots of 
DIY projects here at the house. When I found that stuff, that's what really got me on the channel. Well, his DIY stuff grabbed all of the hardcore fish people. And then they went out and told people how good he was. And then I'm, I'm sure I've heard him say that his turning point was the Frank saga, his flower horn. When he got the yes. flower horn, all of a sudden people were more interested in talking about an individual fish than projects. And uh, so he, he like shifted his show more that way and it blew up. And I, when I say blow yeah. up, I don't mean as a bad thing, but as a good thing, you know, and you can't fault a guy. He has a million people. So he's yeah. doing well. And right. yeah, you know, aquarium co-op, uh, another awesome channel. I love a lot of Corey's older stuff back when he was like, Hey, we're going to take this five gallon bucket and we're going to turn it into an overhead uh, canister filter, essentially mm -hmm. that type of stuff, uh, especially because, you know, a lot of those were back before they made it, if you will, or before the channels got big. So they're a lot more just like you or I, you know, sitting there in the garage building something versus yeah. the, the studio setup and all of that. Well, I also I liked it when he did the test strips, the mm -hmm. API test strips, and he cut them in half. So you would have like twice as many for the price. That was genius. And, yeah, absolutely. You know, little things like that. But the, I also enjoyed... Uh, Kind of his podcast too. It's pretty enjoyable. Definitely. I see Lisa from KG Tropicals in here. Hey Lisa, thank you so much for being here. And thank you and John both for sending people our way. We do appreciate that. 103 people watching right now. Very much appreciate that. I know a lot more people are lurking in the chat that we never will know your name, but we do still appreciate you and we think about you. I'm so blessed. I get to hang out with John once a week for the uh Aquashella stream. Or mm -hmm. show we do a, a meeting once a week, and he is yeah. so much fun. But he is incredibly artistic. He made well, I don't want to tell what he made in case he's going to do it on a show. Uh, <laughs> but he made something incredible. He is such a talented guy. But he is absolutely. Yeah, that uh, uh, what he did. He <laughs> might not like that. Skip Steve O says you guys should write a book together. So that would be a good one. Fish from Fever and Chattanooga. Ed. That would be one day. Let's we'll, we'll start with the talks. You know, once we get our talks down, I think we could maybe transition that over. We'll get shy unless she's writing uh, another book now. So maybe when she's not busy, wow. uh, we can get Mrs. Fever to take our our talks and our information and turn it into a book. So that's awesome. I have started about six or seven books, and then also several movies. I've just never completely finished them or did anything with it i've been doing it for years just every so often i write a little bit to it yeah. i well, need she, to take a class on it she did one book and it's a shame that uh i say it's a shame it's good that she put it on a free site because you know it's out there for the world but last i knew i think she had like seven hundred thousand people had read it wow that's um, great. She, she gets nothing from it but that's still sometimes i'm like I wish 700,000 people would watch something I do, you know? Yeah. So this one, she's going to see if she can uh, maybe do it for profit. Who knows? That'd be I don't awesome. know. But we'll enlist her writing skills is where I was going with that. One of my buddies, he wrote a book and I like read it and it was like so graphic. I did not read it. <laughs> it was, it was like Vikings and fighting. And it was like, Oh boy, I can't. It was like over the top. Absolutely. I'm trying to make sure I didn't miss anything in the chat. Uh, Upper Aquatic says, I really don't like Joe. I'm just going to read. I really don't like Joey. His actions as a top YouTuber is messed up. He does have good content uh, with how to, but I really don't like him as a person. Somebody's going to clip out me saying that somebody else said that and be like, look what Fisher yeah. and Fever said. And then Joey's going to message me and be like, why'd you do that? You jerk. Um, yeah. Everybody's entitled to their own opinion on everybody. The way that I deal with things and this is how i tell people because i've got friends on opposite ends of different spectrums different debates i've got friends that don't like each other i treat every single person i come into contact with based upon how they've treated me while taking into account the understanding and knowledge of past actions so if somebody's a jerk to i don't know whoever to right. ed Oh, okay. Rico. Yeah. Whoever Rico, Ed, doesn't matter if somebody's a jerk to, to Rico or Ed. Maybe they don't get along, 
but that person and I have an outstanding relationship. Uh, I, I don't just turn and say, well, I don't like you anymore because you and Rico got into it, or I don't like Rico anymore because he got into it with you. That's between you all. Um, you know, it, so I, I respect your thoughts. I try and stay out of it. Uh, and I just treat people how they treat me personally. Yeah. One thing um, in YouTube, we've been taught right away, no religion, no politics. Yeah, well, exactly. Another thing is we don't also do, we don't do friction. Like we don't bash anybody. Uh, we're going to pretty much like everybody or, you know, be positive towards everybody. Cause it's, it's not worth bashing somebody because it all comes back tenfold and it's silly. Uh, that Absolutely. was the reason why I started the Tennessee fish mafia was there was two yep. sides for some other deal. And they wanted to know which side I stood on. And I said, I'm Tennessee Fish Mafia. We stand on our own. That's so, exactly it. Yep. Yeah. And that's the way I put it is everyone will always be welcome at the table. But at the end of the day, we will always sit at our own table. So you're, you're welcome to join us, but we're not picking your table or her table. Moving on from that, Mississippi Hippie <laughs> says the take on your green screen is beautiful. I just love the combo and contrast of fish. And that plant is huge. Yeah, so I've got uh, an even bigger plant in there. I'm looking to see just how big it is now. I've got a bulbitis that this thing has grown. Uh, it could fill up, and, and I'm not joking with you, it could fill an entire 20-gallon, standard 20-gallon. Take the whole thing. You can't see how big my hands are out. But bigger than I can get on the screen. It, it goes about a foot and a half across this 110-gallon tank. It just takes up the whole area, front to back, side to side, smashed into the glass. Um, and I absolutely love it. I refuse to, to trim it into smaller plants just because I've not ever seen one that big before. Check this out. This Anubius is coming nice. out of, the, it's lifting the lid. <laughs> that's uh, the one that's in the picture, right? There, it's the same. It's got two leaves that are out of the water now. Uh, it's got to love it. Uh, but thank you so much for that, Mississippi Hippie. I appreciate that you enjoy that. Rustic Nashville with a $5 super chat says, what type of glowfish are those behind you? They're gorgeous. What all is in the tank? So they are just the, uh, I guess, white skirt. They're skirt tetra glowfish. And then I've also got a variety of plecos in there. I've got a vampire. I've got a blue phantom, a green phantom, a sultan pleco. I've got angel fish in there. I've got some randoms, if you will. That's where a lot of randoms went they're like oh i got a tank from somebody that they were getting rid of it and the fish came with it so now i've got three of this tetra and one of this barb and weird stuff like that so i honestly don't even know all of the fish that are in there exactly what i've got uh, but it is my mish, miss blah, 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 blah. it's my community tank it's just a mix of things and i absolutely love it it's got angels in there of course as you can see um there's an upside down catfish Trying to think of the stuff that you don't see in the video. I think it's mostly at the upside down catfish, the plecos. Uh, and I've noticed, uh, I haven't caught them yet, but a couple of fish have disappeared out of that tank. And my favorite cat has come running into the smelling like fish tank water. We all, we all know that, that particular smell. Uh, so I think that one of my cats, sadly my favorite, has been fishing in that tank. I know that his favorite place to sleep is on top of the piranha tank, which, which is very uh, securely lidded so that he can't get into that at all. But um, I think we're, we've are we got a problem with that guy making his way in and snagging a couple of fish out. Throw on down through here. But thank you again so much, Rustic Nashville, for the super chat. I do appreciate the support. Never expected. Always humbling and appreciated. Uh, you all go a long way to, to helping out and in the fish room running so thank you so much for that paying the <laughs> pay the bills if you will i forgot that i had uh an auto renew feature when i first started my website so i turned around and there was 80 dollars gone for a feature i don't even use on the website i was like uh so stuff like that really helps that <laughs> the check came in right before that i was like okay that covered that 80 dollars for fishroomfever.com uh the email address along with it that i didn't expect to come out so thank you so much 
Upper Aquatic, personally, I don't see a problem with going over the same topics you've done before. Sometimes there's updates that would be beneficial to include in a new video, in my opinion. You're absolutely right. And also, a lot of the, I don't say the demographic changes, but a lot of the crowd changes. You know, there are a lot of names in here that weren't here two years ago. Uh, there are a lot of you that have hung around, and I do very much appreciate that. And I love you people that have been here for a while. Always will. Uh, but it's great that we've got new people, you know, people that sometimes, you know, see their name for the first time tonight, see their name for the first time a month ago. So they didn't get to have these conversations that we had a year ago, two years ago. And we probably don't remember them. I mean, let's be honest. Most of the people in here that have been around for two years have watched thousands of hours of content since the last time we went over stuff a year ago, two years ago. So it's uh, it never hurts to have a refresher, like you said, Upper. Sorry, I didn't mean to walk off on Go ahead. It, You're I, fine. I pulled a dead goodie it out. It's my first goodie it ever to die. And sorry uh, to hear that. I looked at his body and it looked good. I think he's probably just old. He's probably almost three years old, so bummer. Sorry to hear that, buddy. Yeah, but <clears throat> I pulled him out, but then he was stinky. And I was like, oh, I can't have him next to me during the stream. Yeah. <laughs> I was gotta just deal with that. Pulled him up and put him there, and I was like, oh no. Chris Patterson, thank you so much for the support using that member chat, uh, member super chat. Been a member for 12 months saying hashtag Lurker Nation. I know it and I appreciate it. And we've got a lot of people that lurk or do the replays. And I don't, that means just as much to me as the people that are in here, you know, with us live and or talking to us. Again, I know there are people that I'll probably never know their name. They come in, they listen, they leave. And uh, I appreciate the fact that they do that. Roll on down through here, looking for highlighted questions and comments. I see oh. Tom Patterson, also been a member for 14 months. Love the Pattersons. Y'all are awesome. So anyone in Indy February 5th for the CCAC swap? I don't think I will be at that one. Actually, James, you might be with me. Uh, I'm going to Knoxville. Okay. And, gotcha. uh, 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 Bob is going to be going to Knoxville, and so is his nephew, and we're going to see if Robert wanted to go, and we were going to go to different fish stores, kind of like that time we went out to the burger place, and I haven't gotcha. asked you yet. But gotcha, and that's going to be on the 5th? Yeah, well, that's th next weekend. Uh, okay, I should be able to do that. Um, just get with me off the air, and we'll figure it out. I know that there's some appointments and things going on, but if it's on the weekend, should be good to go with that. But I would love to go to Indy. Uh, Haley uh, was talking about it today on her stream, and I wanted to go. But we're going. It's, it's about time for us to go renew our memberships. It's funny we live in Knoxville, and we've got memberships to the uh, Sir Graham Society. But it's a great club, and lots of awesome people in that club. So, and this this one is going to be at uh, Aquatic Arts again. Oh, yeah, that was a really good one. I know. I, I hate that I have to miss that, but this is not. Not a good week slash a month to go out of state. And we're going to be doing it twice. Yeah. Because on the 19th, we've got Kentucky. Yep. And we'll be just, if the Pattersons want to come down and hang out, out with us, I don't know how long of a drive. It might be a three-hour drive. It might be really boring for you. But I figured we'll go up there and talk with their club. And then maybe afterwards, we'll all go out and get some pizza or something. Yep. And then That's drive home. That's got to be fun. That'll be our second talk officially, uh, being invited at a club to speak. So I'm looking forward to that. Well, actually, uh, yeah. Never mind. I was going to oh, say, yeah. it's actually the third club we've been asked. To, but well, no, yeah, it's actually that, the true. second. Because they asked us a long, long time ago. And yeah. then, uh, let's see. And then we have Aquashella the last weekend of the month. Yep. Well, Stira says I should introduce that cat to his dog. Uh, dog loves cats, says they taste like chicken. Yeah, I know. It's it's a rough circle of life thing, life thing going on there. Finn Wiggles with a $10 super chat. In case those of you all that are listening are wondering, we're not just reading super chats. I just don't have anything live to read off besides super chats. So that's what we're going with at the moment. We'll be happy to take your questions or comments highlighted with at Fisher and Fever. And then we're also going to talk about books a little bit more as well. But real quick, Ed, Finn, uh, Finn Wiggles with a $10 super chat says, going to miss Saltwater Saturday, uh, working overtime to support my fish room fever slash Tennessee mafia peeps. LOL. That's cool. 
God love you for that, Finn Wiggles. I do really appreciate that. That means a lot to me. Um, I, I understand um, the putting in the hours to put the money elsewhere thing. So I appreciate the support. Hopefully they don't work it too hard. And there's always a replay if you want it. Otherwise, we'll see you next Thursday on The Tank Show, my friend. Yeah. Uh, Bob Purcell says, how many different piranha are in the hobby? So I think that you can source about 14. And I may be way off with that. There may be a lot more than that. I'm just going off of uh, aquascapeonline.com. They're they don't even know I'm talking about them. They're not a sponsor or anything. Uh, but that's where I get my piranha. When I can't find them locally, which a lot of times I can't, that's where I go to. They've shipped them to me successfully and reliably. Uh, good, healthy fish. They've got uh, probably about 14 different types of piranha on there. Not always in stock all the time, uh, especially because a lot of them are wild caught, so it's seasonal. But they keep them up there so you, you can look and see what they typically have available throughout the year as the season comes into play and kind of plan accordingly and go, okay, well, I know that they have that fish. So let me get ready for when the season hits and I can order that fish. Uh, Liquid Zoo says, who's the better fish keeper, Ed or James? I'm going to say Ed. I'm going to say it's definitely James. I wish. It's a tie. He's got piranhas, go. I've guppies. You make the decision. You make the decision. <laughs> there we go. My piranhas. Pair those guppies up. Just like fingers. Well, oh, I wanted to tell you that my local fish store has exodons. Oh, awesome. Nice. I love I the know. exodons. I really do. I didn't know if you needed them more or not. It, eventually, but, right now, I'm still moving tanks and downsizing and trying to figure out. The exodons are definitely not going anywhere, but I haven't decided exactly where they're going to end up. If it's going to be uh, another 75, a 90, which is the same footprint except taller, uh, essentially. And then uh, maybe the 125. I don't know just yet. So that'll kind of depend on down the road adding some more to it, uh, which tank size I go with. Now, that's good to know. I appreciate it. Will they pound? I mean, I know that they'll eat a sick exodon. You know, if they see one mm -hmm. of the exodons going down, like spazzing me or something, they're going to pound it. But what if it's a smaller one? That, yes, absolutely. Um, they definitely can. You know, they their diet consists primarily of scales in the wild, and they love to aggressively go for scales. So I don't risk putting, say, one that's that size and with mine that are that size. Yeah, and that's just deal. because it's they already chase each other around like crazy. It's funny. If if you think piranha like to chase each other around, these guys, they're just nonstop chasing each other around. So I wouldn't want to put anything smaller in there. Plecos have done well in there, but the plecos are typically bigger than them anyway, so they typically won't mess with them in my experience. Someone yes. I, I apologize, I don't remember who was asking, but someone up up, up above asked how rico stands doing uh he's not feeling just great. reading oh well i've been holding it off for about 20 minutes because i didn't want to ever interrupt but uh he's not feeling great so uh keep him in your thoughts because he's a great guy and it's a bummer that some people suffer with different ailments and he's one of those guys that has to suffer with an ailment absolutely Thank you so much to the Zen Ginger and all the mods dropping links in the chat. I appreciate that. I really, really do. Sarah J. Sieber, how's it going? Says, hi, Fisher and Fever. I did a video of an assassin snail and thought about uh, our very own Tennessee Fish Mafia assassin snail. Yeah, absolutely. Gotta love it. Yeah. That is very cool to hear. Uh, hey. And the way that we kind of work into each other's lives as a group is, is funny. I think, well, Sarah is definitely going to be in uh, Knoxville. Yep. But I think... Rustic Nashville will be the assassin snail will be there too. So yep. we'll all get to meet her too. So that's pretty it's, awesome. It's going to be a lot of fun. It really, really is going to be a, a heck of a time. So I'm looking forward to that. All right. And oh, almost caught up. James Stone, how are you? Good to see you. Says, James, anything I could put into a 125 gallon with a huge Oscar? Thank you. So. A lot of times you'll see people put another large Oscar in there because they kind of hold their own against each other. 
temperament's going to be a big thing. So without knowing how aggressive your guy is, I'm going to say it's it's possibly likely aggressive given the fact that you don't have anything else in there, or maybe you just haven't thought about putting anything else in there. One thing that has worked for me that I don't recommend universally for everybody because temperament varies not just by species, but also by individual fish, uh, is trying some of the other big Central South American cichlids. Uh, that sometimes works well, sometimes doesn't. The problem is you don't know until you get that fish in the tank. So if it's not a fish that you really wanted and you don't have another tank for it, it's not a great idea. Uh, things like uh, a green terror, uh, VA house and spill them, uh, things like that I've found have worked well with Oscars before, but a lot of times it's just another Oscar and they get to enjoy each other's company and their personalities sometimes come out even more, which is having that other Oscar in there. You could do a good size pleco. I'd look for something that gets maybe, you know, seven to 10 inch range, obviously not a common plecostomus, but you know, maybe look into a blue phantom, green phantom. Depends on exactly how aggressive your Oscar is, James. But there are definitely some possibilities. Uh, and then you could go with something that is maybe not quite as big. Again, not exactly sure the size, but I'm, I'm guessing we're looking at, you know, 12 inches here on this Oscar. You could do a group of like six inch fish. You know, maybe put a group of five, six inch fish in there, or six, six inch fish in there. So that way, even if he does have some aggression issues, it's spread out a little bit and you've got that group of fish versus one lonely little fish. Hey, Atkins nature aquarium lurking. What about you, Ed? Any thoughts on what to add to that 125 with an Oscar? Big Oscar. Maybe a, a big one of the larger synodonists because uh, mm -hmm. they are like catfish that are bred, it seems like. Well, not bred, but it naturally live with cichlids in the wild and they hold their own. I've got a huge one. I don't even know what it's called but it's almost a foot long. It's fin at the top goes up about that tall and it's tails like that big. And it's just beautiful. The problem is, is it likes to hide under a piece of wood, you know, a big piece of wood yep. throughout the day. And everybody sees him because he's bigger than the wood. So his tail like this is going like this all day long, you know, which is really neat, but everybody's like, what's that joy fish. And uh, when he comes out, he looks just like a normal synodontist, but really big at night um, one oh go ahead i would say on the catfish one thing i will mention uh not always an issue but i have seen it be an issue is the bigger catfish oftentimes have longer barbels mm -hmm. uh, i have seen where some of the more aggressive fish will see that barbel especially if they're sitting in a log and that thing's hanging out and go oh that's a worm and try and take a bite out of a barbel Ooh. so just keep yeah. that in mind it's not guaranteed, maybe not even probable, but I have seen it happen before, unfortunately. I wish I knew what type of synodonis I had. I, I I don't think my barbels are longer than an inch on this guy. See, I've got we call them whiskers. His his barbels are as long as his body. I mean, wow. his his barbels are like that, and he's lost one or two before from other fish getting nippy. Mine so. almost looks like a super fancy giant corridora. Okay, I don't know, uh, Kenny. Edwards, uh, Kenny E. from Danica, e. he identified it like that, and he said, oh, that's a sickle, now I can't even say, synodonis, and he went, blah, 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 blah. and it's like, oh, and uh, yeah, I, uh, I've just been, he's just been cleaning up after the other fish. Absolutely. Cat Hair Crafts celebrating here, partying. It says, I've been a member for one year, one month, and one day. Well, thank you so much, and congratulations, Cat Hair Crafts. That is awesome. You got that one-year blue membership badge. I know you've got some people in the chat that are going to be grumbling at you because I see them talking about uh, want my one-year badge. Uh, so thank you, and congratulations for that. Welcome to the the one-year family. I know the Zen Ginger is very close to the two-year mark. She was the very first member. Uh, she'll get to debut the two-year member badge, which is different than the one that's shown. Uh, but she'll get to be the solo premiere artist of that, I guess. I will put that. Scuba Steve is still asking, from last week, what's my mafia name? Uh, Silent Slicer Scoobs? Question mark, LOL. Uh, if that's what you want to be, I, I kind of like that. You're kind of like a ninja yeah. mafia assassin type person there. And I see you like... And Spending some cookery knives around and, you know. 
And it's awesome that he's from uh, Kentucky because he's close enough for us to just call him in for special missions. Yeah, absolutely. I like that. If that's what you want, I mean, it, it's entirely up to you. But I, I think that's pretty cool. So, Slicer Scoobs. <laughs> Slicer Scoobs. I, I came up with a good name for Dee Dee. Uh, the Dee Dee Gun. Oh, nice. I do BB like that. Gun, the Dee Dee Gun. Oh, that's pretty cool. That is cool. That is cool. I like that. I'm trying to get on our show so I can hit the like button. Bam. Oh, well, thank you. All right. It jumped on me. Let me get back up here. We've got a couple more questions. Upper Aquatic says, I have four glow tetras, uh, and I'd like to add them to my 60-gallon tall with six angels. How many glows should I add to keep the piece? LOL. You've got experience with them. Thank you. You've got four. Going into a 60, you've got six angels. I would probably get you three more, maybe four more. Um, I don't know what colors you have, what colors you're looking for, what mix you'd like to have. Get you three or four more, stick them in there. That way that'll give them a nice size group for a secure feeling around those angels. And that will also, sorry, the eye is irritating me. It's, I hate having something stuck in my eye. Uh, but that will also give you seven, eight fish to potentially spread out aggression. The glowfish are pretty good at getting away. And I honestly don't see a whole lot of aggression except at feeding time. Sometimes the angels will get a little like, hey, move over. It's my turn to eat. You come back later. But yeah, three or four should do good. Should give you a beautiful mix. Ben Wiggles says, uh, could a Paku, 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 live with an Oscar? So I know we've got some people that do keep them. I've kept them before, you know, a decade plus ago. My thing was monster fish. That's all I did. Um, I really don't recommend them for most people just because you're looking at a fish that gets, you know, two foot, no problem. They get huge. They get huge and they get huge quick. Realistically, most people are not going to have the appropriate setup to house one. So that's why I don't recommend it. I know we've got some awesome people like Bob at Kaler's Aquatics. You know, he's got them. And he's a great fish keeper. You know, see, there you go. There's a, a size comparison, if you will. And look, the Oscars are behind. Yeah. And those Oscars are probably 18 to 20 inch Oscars. So if you have a 20,000 gallon tank, I think it's totally okay. <laughs> there you go. Absolutely. Uh, now that is one of the things that uh, I, I hate to call it a problem, but I guess we'll call it what it is. Uh, problem. It's not so much that those things are available in local fish stores, because I think they should be. I'm not someone that says, well, I'll ban these fish, outlaw these fish. But I think a lot of times the correct information is not given to people interested in those fish. Somebody goes in and they buy a red tail catfish that's this big for, you know, $49.99, whatever, and they don't know they're looking at a three foot, 200 pound monster uh, that's just a little bitty baby right now. So I, I wouldn't advise the PQ just because going to get huge. Now, if you've got the setup for it, by all means, they could definitely go together if you've got the setup for it. And that Roll on down be, here. That might that was at the Tennessee Aquarium. Yeah. And they've got a, it's a flooded Amazon uh, tank where they've got trees that go three stories up. And I don't know, I bet you it's the size of my whole, I bet I could fit my house in that tank. So it might be bigger than 20,000. But they have probably about mm -hmm. 25 or 30 giant uh, Pacus in there. Oh, they're awesome. They're beautiful. They're neat fish. I love them. And I love how big they get. But it's just not something for the average home hobbyist, in my opinion. Let me move my chat back here so I'm not way off like that. Paul Sotero, but I remember for 13 months on Team Snowball, Paul says, hanging with the fish nerds for 56 Thursdays. Yes, sir. Paul has been nice. dropping the knowledge in the chat for 56 Thursdays consecutively. We appreciate the support. The information and the love, Paul. Thank you so much. Paul Sergey Paul. Sieber. He is Paul's an awesome guy. Sergey Sieber says that the chat's gonna jump. It got scared of her comment. That's what happened. Her comment was so aggressive. No, I would Sergey Sieber says my friend impulse bought a two-inch dinosaur in quotation marks bisher. How fast did they grow? So if you're looking at the Senegalis or the Senegal Bisher, they don't grow super quick. Um, I mean, mine have gotten to eight to 10 inches over the course of 
a year and a half or so, maybe longer than that. Um, how time flies. It's crazy how we've got people that are going to be members for two years coming on soon, which is awesome, but it, it's amazing how fast time flies. Those are not super fast growers. Of all of them that I've seen, those are one of the slower growers. They don't tend to get really aggressive in my experience, which is having quite a few of them. I'm looking at the tank over here now. I've got the, the Senegals and I've got the Ornata Penis, the Ornate Bishers. Uh, the Ornates grew to 12 plus inches in the same time that my Senegals each put on about two inches. So one gained eight inches in the same time that the Dinosaur Bisher gained two inches, uh, which is, you know, it's, it's crazy. So they're, they're not super fast growers. So you've got time on that one. Yeah. The, is it the Bertizi? They're yeah. also known the, as the armored the, and the banded that they, they are the same as the Senegal. They're a pretty slow grower, but they get fat. So, I mean, Mine's about that fat, but she's only about a foot long. But my gotcha. ornates, I mean, they're almost 16, 18 inches. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, the Delhesies are another slower grower. And like you said, they don't really get long. They just get super chunky. And that's one of the reasons that I like the look of them. They're cool fish. But I, there's one thing I recommend when you're picking a biker, biker, whatever you want to call it, is they have personalities. You want one that hangs out at the front of the tank. It is worth its weight in gold. The first one I ever met was James's buddy, and it just stayed in the front and swam around circles and loves people. And then the other yep. ones hide. And that's what I, I was looking for forever was one with the personality, and I found my uh, banded one. She was out in front just doing the same thing as James's. And I've seen several since then. And... When I say several, I'm saying maybe only 5% do it. I would say 90%, 95% hide. But when you they find do. that one that wants to be in front, buy it. Because it is going to be your favorite fish in the world. Uh, Sean Peck, he has a huge one, but it only comes out for feeding. You know? Yeah. So, I mean, it's kind of his mystery fish in his tank. But at the same time, I, I like having the fish that just sits in front and looks at me all day long. Yep. Uh, that's part of why you see me looking over here so much when I do these live streams is I've got no, um, doing the same thing over here. Six spicers over here, uh, and they're all very active. None, none quite as much as Buddy. Buddy will hang out right at the front. I've got one ornate that likes to hang out right next to him. They've become friends, but most of them kind of like hide toward the back or go behind sponge filters or go behind plants and things. But I absolutely love it. I love watching them. They're really cool fish. I think. That, you know, get some enjoyment out of them. Um, and they are yeah, afraid it's of the, anything. Yeah, it's one of those fish that I will definitely keep as I'm downsizing things. The Zen Ginger has been a member for 22 months on Team Zebra, no less. The longest member of the Fisher and Fever family and on the highest level. Because she hurt me if I didn't point that out as well. I uh, say, and so very close. Two more months. Hashtag Team Zebra. Thank you so much, Zen, for everything you've done. All the support. The awesome moderating you do. Um, and yeah, two more months. You know, hit that two-year mark. It's crazy that it's been so long. CVP2003 Aquatics says, uh, it's been a member for five months. Excuse me. It says, hiya. Hiya, Stephen P. How are you, my friend? Good to see you. Roll through here. I feel like I, I got ahead and then I'm behind again. Killer Kitty 08, been a member for six months. Thank you so much for that support. Killer Kitty says, whoa, halfway there. Living on a prayer. I'm not gonna. <laughs> I'm not gonna sing it. I realized what was going on there, halfway through reading it. I'm not gonna sing it. I don't need that copyright strike. Uh, you don't need to hear me sing it. Uh, but yeah, absolutely. Living on a prayer. And thank you so much for that, Mississippi Hippie says. I've got to ask too. What would my mafia name be? The hippie. I don't, I don't know. know. Mississippi Hippie is kind of a good. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, 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 I honestly, I'm with Ed. I really like just the Mississippi hippie. It really, especially since it's the Tennessee fish mafia, it's almost like that foreign agent, if you will. You're like that foreign element, um, you know, that uh, French assassin or whatever in I the American use League. This as a cell phone with the razor up against my ear. So when I have a cell please. phone right here, bring in the Mississippi hippie. Bring in the Mississippi hippie. We've got we an issue an we need resolved. <laughs> Got a code 12. Oh, no. absolutely. 
All right, let's get down through here. Master Aquatics scared away the chat again. I'm going back up here. Sorry, folks. But yeah, Fisher Fever, when will I get my own special mafia name? Question mark. I feel totally left out, crying my right eye out. See, Ed, you started this. You, well, the, you're going to be the, the giver of names for this. Well, I've been I've done probably most of the names. The the thing is, is I need I, I'm not even for sure who we're doing them right now, so I almost have to write everything down. <laughs> cause I might give it a might give you away again. Like the DD gun was easy because we were in Bob's stream and we all sat down and we I was able to come up with one. So we'll what we'll do is uh maybe next week I'll bring in a pad of paper and we'll just go one by one if we have to <laughs> but we just we don't want to give somebody else the same name yeah absolutely absolutely all right see those fishies good day didn't good say day. anything but throwing out that member super chat there but remember for 16 months thank you so much for that t-bone i hope you're doing well good day to you my friend always a pleasure to have you here oh austin uh is here from Fantastic Freaks. He dropped a $5 super sticker. I don't know what the sticker looks like, but he made an awesome video today of nice. our friend, uh, you know, James from Blue Dog at, mm -hmm. uh, yep. at Aquashella's. He started his own business real close to Austin's house. And so he did hmm. a store tour. So I encourage everybody to go check it out. Uh, it's a lot of reptiles and fish. So pretty cool. Video. Very, very cool. I, we were interviewing him, and or maybe it was my morning interview before Aquashella, and I asked him, how did he get the name Blue Dog? And it choked me up, because he was in the military, and in, I, it was somewhere in the Middle East. I don't know if it was at Afghanistan or where, but he was in a blown-out house with his other military guys, like five other guys, and somebody threw a grenade through the window, and they have a dog... That was named Blue Dog, and he picked up the grenade and ran and blew himself up to save all the, the men in the, the house. So he named his business Blue Dog. And I, I just, like, I get choked up every time I think about that. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm a big that's, wuss. That's, that's a tough one. <laughs> I'm a big one. <laughs> Mississippi Hippie says, I still say you should be Dr. Fever because, one, you have the radio voice. Oh, Thank man. you so much, Mississippi Hippie, calling in live on the air. No. Uh, two, without a doctor, everyone else either dies or goes to jail because they had to go to the hospital. Just saying. Uh, I, I may be persuaded to go to Dr. Fever, but I think I'm going to gonna stick where I'm at. Though I do, like, I do like your reasoning, Mississippi Hippie. I like the logic behind that. Logic's a good way to win me over. All right, rolling down through here. Now we had a new member. Let me get back to it. We get back up here. Only Oscars. Welcome to the team. Welcome to the Fish Room Fever family. Thank you for becoming a member. There is behind the scenes content uh, that you can go check out if you would like to, along with, of course, access to those awesome members only emojis and the membership badge, which is stuck on there. So you don't have to do anything with that. Like that's automatic. But the emojis, the members love to play with those, and there's stuff behind the scenes that you can check out. Thank you so much for the love and support and joining the Fish Room Fever family. Alrighty, Fantastic Freaks. Hey, buddy. I don't think people can see it. I got my fantastic shirt on tonight. Thanks again, Austin, for sending that out to me. Appreciate that. But the $5 super chat, that cute little fox painting number one on the board there. You're number one, my friend. Hope you're doing well. Hope things are going good for you there. And once again, welcome and thank you for being a part of the Fish Room Fever family of channels. That Fish Room Fever lineup, including, of course, myself, James, Chattanooga Ed, Rico Stan, and Fantastic Freaks, trying to bring you all good quality, mostly wholesome content. Uh, but just based off of trying to make the world a better place, trying to make fish keeping better. So thank you so much for being a part of that. Zebra Pleco fans saying hello. Good to see you, Zebra Pleco fans. Enjoy the stuff you do. I like watching your videos. I love the Zebra Plecos, as most of you all know. Susan for SLC Aquatics. Fish fam mom, been a member for nine months. They keep up the great work, guys. You as well, Susan. And thank you so much for your support and everything you've done over the years. Um, you 
you helped me out a lot when I was first getting started and worked me through some different tech stuff and things like that. So I appreciate that. I really do. And I haven't forgotten. So thank you, Susan. Susan, Could you go eight with awesome. Susan is awesome. She should Definitely. be the angel fish. There you go. Oh, I like that. I like that too. Kara Kitty 8 in here again with a $2 super sticker with that number one fox. Throw that right there. Thank you so much, Killer Kitty 8 That's super, super cute. I love that. Appreciate that support there. Make sure I didn't miss anybody. I didn't. We've made it to the bottom of the chat at exactly 1030. How crazy is that? We've got 104 people watching. Now, I want to tell you, the party's you know, just now getting started. We've got Chattanooga Ed coming up live next, right now, with Crafted. Ed, what are we going to be working on tonight? We are going to paint the baby fish. And uh, <laughs> finish the baby fish. Absolutely. I had, to, I had to paint the baby fish's face white, so that way the paint wouldn't, like, change color. Because I want it to yep. all be even for the whole thing. So that's the game uh, tonight. T Bone, I don't know. Uh, T Bone said had an issue with uh, his membership getting cut off for some reason. I'm not sure what's going on there. It could be a country related thing. Could just be YouTube being dumb. It does that sometimes. It is showing your your one year member badge on there, um, but don't feel bad on my account if you're having difficulties no explanation needed stuff happens uh, but i appreciate you letting me know that if you do disappear from the list of members that is because youtube's being a jerk that being said bottom of the chat questions answered i love it 105 people watching let's go check out crafted with chattanooga ed where if you're new to this channel and you don't know about ed we do aquarium related projects every thursday night following the tank show so we're going to go hang out there. We're still going to talk fish. I'll be watching the chat. I'll be in the stream, but I'll mostly be checking out chat, asking questions, commenting. Still going to be fishy, fun stuff going on. Go check it out live now. Again, as always, thank you so much, Chad Nugget Ed, for being here. The buddy pal and co-host with the most. A huge thank you to all my moderators, members, lurkers, listeners, super chatters, contributors, commentators, questioners, and of course, the replay crew. I love you guys. Until next time, keep your fish healthy. Keep yourselves healthy. Don't be afraid to catch yourself a little fish room fever. Take care, everybody.